Welcome to a lesson on double angle identities. The goal of the video is to use double angle identities to determine function values. So the first thing you'll notice is there are three double angle identities for cosine. Cosine of 2a is equal to cosine squared a minus sine squared a, or 1 minus 2 sine squared a, or 2 cosine squared a minus 1. All of these are equal to cosine of 2a. And for sine and tangent, there's only one double angle identity. Sine 2a is equal to 2 times sine a times cosine a. Tangent 2a is equal to 2 times tangent a, all over 1 minus tangent squared a. Let's take a quick look on how these can be verified. If we take the sum identity for cosine, and instead of using a plus b, use cosine of a plus a, we can see how cosine 2a is equal to cosine squared a minus sine squared a. Now taking this, now taking cosine squared a minus sine squared a, we can replace sine squared a with one minus cosine squared a and obtain two cosine squared a minus one. Or if we now replace cosine squared a with one minus sine squared a, we can obtain one minus two sine squared a. So you may want to pause the video and take a closer look at this. Next, for the sine of 2a, again we'll use a sum identity, and instead of using a plus b, we'll use a plus a, and we can obtain two times sine a cosine a. And lastly, for tangent, we'll use the sum identity again with angle a plus angle a, and we can obtain two tan a minus tan squared a. So again, it's pretty straightforward, but you may want to pause the video and look at it more closely. Let's go and take a look at a couple problems. Here we have sine a equals three-fifths in quadrant two. We want to find the exact value of cosine 2a, sine 2a, and tangent 2a, and then determine the quadrant of angle 2a. So if we go over here and look at the identities, we can find cosine 2a with just the given information since we do have sine a. So let's go ahead and find that first. So we have one minus two times sine squared a well, if sine a is three-fifths, we'll have three-fifths squared. And we'll go ahead and simplify this. Three-fifths squared would be nine twenty-fifths times two would be eighteen twenty-fifths, which gives us seven twenty-fifths for cosine two a. Next, let's try to find sine of two a. Now, there's only one identity for sine two a and right away we can see we're going to have to find the cosine of angle A. So let's take a closer look at uh, angle A with a sine of three-fifths in the second quadrant. This would be our angle A, and so we'll draw our reference triangle. Here's our reference angle. And again, this angle has a sine of three-fifths, so opposite over hypotenuse. So this is a three, four, five right triangle. Since we're in the second quadrant, we'll label this negative four. So now we know that sine a is given as three-fifths and cosine a equals negative four-fifths. So going back to sine of two a, we'll have two times sine a, which is three-fifths, times cosine a, which is negative four-fifths. So we can put this over one. Our denominator is 25. Two times three times negative four will be negative 24. So the sine of 2a is equal to negative 24 fifths. Lastly, let's find tangent 2a. So again, notice, look at our formula, we have to find the tangent of angle a. Well, here's a reference angle for angle a. The tangent of angle a would be opposite over adjacent, or three over negative four. So tangent a equals negative three fourths. So we'll have two times tangent a, or two times negative three fourths, over one minus negative three fourths squared. Let's go ahead and simplify this negative three halves in the numerator, and our denominator is going to be one minus, now this square would be nine sixteenths, so one minus nine sixteenths would be seven sixteenths. And then lastly, this would be the same as negative three halves divided by seven sixteenths, but instead of dividing, we'll multiply by the reciprocal, so times sixteen sevenths. And again, simplifying, and we have negative twenty-four sevenths for the tangent of 2a. And again, we could have just taken sine of 2a over cosine of 2a to obtain negative 24 sevenths, uh, but I wanted to go ahead and use the identity. Okay, the last question deals with what is the quadrant of angle 2a? 
So let's take a closer look at that. We know the given angle was in the second quadrant. So angle A is between 90 and 180. So angle 2A, multiplying each of these by 2, this tells us that angle 2A would be in quadrant 3 or quadrant 4. So to determine which quadrant it would be in, we can take a look at the signs of cosine 2A, sine 2A, and tangent 2A. Well, right away, we know that the cosine of 2A is positive. Well, if cosine 2A is positive, we have to be in the fourth quadrant because we know the x-coordinate has to be positive. Therefore, we know angle 2A must be in the fourth quadrant instead of the third quadrant. Let's take a look at another problem. Here we're going to use the identities in the reverse order. We want to determine the cosine of angle A given we know that cosine 2A is equal to negative 3 fourths and terminates in the third quadrant. Looking at our identities, we can find cosine of angle A if we know cosine of 2A using this identity. Let's give it a try. So the cosine of 2A is negative 3 fourths. So we'll solve this equation for cosine A. Let's go ahead and add one to both sides. Negative three-fourths plus one would give us one-fourth. Let's go ahead and add one to both sides. That would give us one-fourth on the left equals two cosine squared A. Now we'll divide by two, or we can multiply by one-half, same thing. That will give us one-eighth equals cosine squared A. Now we can take the square root of both sides. This will give us cosine of angle A is equal to plus or minus, square root of one is one. The square root of eight simplifies to two square root two. Now notice we're going to have to determine whether it's going to be a positive or negative value for cosine A. So let's go back to the problem. It says angle 2A terminates in the third quadrant. Well, if an angle is in the third quadrant, it must be between 180 degrees and 270 degrees. So to determine the terminal side of angle A, we can divide everything by two, and we can obtain that angle A is between 90 degrees and 135 degrees, which would put angle A in the second quadrant. And the second quadrant, the x coordinate's negative, therefore our cosine value would be negative. So what we know now is that cosine of angle A is equal to negative one over two square root two. Now let's go ahead and rationalize this just to be consistent. This would give us negative square root two in the numerator, and this would give us square root two times square root two would give us two times this two would be four. And I think we have it. Cosine of angle A is equal to negative square root two divided by four. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching and have a good day.